Now, at the same time, we have to look at one of the most common things today that people are doing is eating a high-protein diet because they think carbohydrates are bad. But if you study many people's work, you can see that if you eat a diet high in protein and low in carbs, like the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet, all these different things, or a diet that's too high in carb and too low in protein, you'll actually get the same response in the body. Now, I'm going to read you a quote from Ray Pete based off eating a high-protein diet. If protein is eaten without a carbohydrate, it will stimulate insul insulin secretion, lowering blood sugar, and activating the stress response, leading to secretion of adrenaline, cortisol, growth hormone, prolactin, and other hormones. Adrenaline will mobilize glycogen from the liver. That's if you actually have it stored, and most people don't because of biliary issues, estrogen dominance, B vitamin deficiencies, vitamin A deficiencies, uh, toxins in the gut, overloading the liver, etc. Poor food frequencies. So adrenaline will mobilize glycogen from the liver, which will mobilize free fatty acids, mainly from fat cells, and cortisol will activate the conversion of protein to amino acids and then fat to sugar for use of energy. So you're actually going to increase fatty acid synthesis on a diet high in protein, which will actually facilitate glucose oxidation, glucose getting into the cell. Now, most people gravitate towards eating nuts and seeds for snacks, bars for snacks, you know, eating carbohydrates for snacks. The problem is these basically glucose-containing convenient foods will actually overexcite insulin, increase anxiety, increase triglycerides, and cause weight gain, stimulate appetite, because an oversupply of glucose in the body, especially when we're not getting glucose into the cell, causes lactic acid production, which is basically inflammation. Now our cells are not producing carbon dioxide, and we end up being in a hypometabolic state. So what's a better choice? Now, of course, there's a lot more to this. We have to look at the types of carbs, you know, root vegetables and eating tropical fruits versus all the other above ground and, and grains and things like that. We have to look at food frequencies, the ratios of proteins, fats. It's, it's, a, it's a chess game. I'm just trying to give you the basics. So what's a better choice? Well, in my eyes, a better choice is fructose. Now, it's hard to find something with pure fructose in it. So I'm not saying eat pure fructose. What I'm saying is tropical fruits have sucrose in them, which is fructose plus glucose. Below ground vegetables have sucrose and fructose and glucose. So you're getting this nice balance effect going on in the body. Because if you're not getting glucose into the cell, Ray Pete has shown that if fatty acids are blocking glucose oxidation in the cell, fructose can actually bypass this oxidation, get into the cell, and facilitate oxidative phosphorylation, which is cell metabolism, and increase metabolic rate. That's why utilizing fruits, not by themselves, with proteins and carbs, and below ground vegetables are a better choice for someone that has blood sugar dysregulation or diabetes than using glucose foods or easy convenient foods that actually stimulate appetite and cause hyperinsulinemia and will cause hypoglycemia and decrease metabolism. So why do we feel fructose is important? Well, yes, fructose is converted into cholesterol. Most people say, all these people out there, that fructose is dangerous and increases triglycerides and increases cholesterol, yada, yada, yada. Well, it does. It definitely increases cholesterol. And this is one of the reasons why we like tropical fruits, because it does increase cholesterol. And cholesterol, according to my notes, is an important antioxidant in the body. And it's actually used to regulate insulin and is important for cellular metabolism and the production of steroid hormones. So if you're eating fruits and your cholesterol goes up, what does that really tell you? Well, if we look at the issue here, cholesterol is super important. It's not bad. It's getting a bad rap. But the problem is, if you're deficient in vitamin A, if you're low in T3, magnesium, if you're not eating a lot of copper-rich foods, maybe you're excess in iron, you're not eating shellfish and whitefish and things like that. The list goes on. Now cholesterol cannot be converted into steroidal hormones because the necessary plus, plus, plus things that it needs to make the conversion isn't there, so cholesterol is going to back up. So is it really the fruits? Is it really the increase in the cholesterol that's the problem? No. It's the deficiencies and the inability of the body to convert the awesome cholesterol into steroidal hormones, etc., as well as the inability of the cell to utilize glucose to actually uh, utilize the cholesterol. That's the problem. It's not the fruits. So, yes, they do increase, increase cholesterol. It's not fruits that are the problem. It's actually what's going on in the cell that's the problem. It's looking at vitamin A, magnesium, copper, and things like that. As I mentioned, fructose can actually bypass fatty acid oxidation. So, as I mentioned, fatty acids from stress block glucose oxidation, glucose getting in the cell for energy. Fructose can actually bypass this and stimulate cellular metabolism. 
So it's very important to always eat fructose containing foods like fruits especially next choice below ground vegetables At the same time a lot of tropical fruits have tons of minerals in them magnesium potassium and magnesium actually helps to regulate cellular metabolism to assist in the conversion of cholesterol to pregnenolone but at the same time potassium actually helps to bring sugar into the cell insulin kicks it into the cell where potassium acts to bring it into the cell which will actually cause less of an insulin spike and allow sugar to get in the cell because it piggybacks it in the cell. Fructose actually increases uric acid levels in the body. Now uric acid, I've talked about this in one of my videos on gout, can be an inflammatory marker especially if you're estrogen dominant, you're, you have a lot of iron going in the body and you have a decreased oxygenation to the tissues that stimulates xanthine oxidase which increases uric acid levels. But uric acid is actually a great another large antioxidant in the body and we actually need it so fruits can actually help increase protective uric acid levels which is a major major antioxidant in the body and you won't have to take all those crappy antioxidants that are out there on the market fructose as I mentioned before in a lot of my videos is important for reproduction it's it's part of seminal fluid and intrauterine fluid in developing fetus the placenta actually turns I'm gonna read this to you the placenta actually turns glucose from the mother's blood into fructose where glucose can move from the fetus back to the mother's blood where fructose cannot re resulting in high concentrations of fructose in the amniotic fluid and this is what increases cellular metabolism increases carbon dioxide increases their heart rate breathing rate etc and allows for growth so the fructose is very important for not only seminal fluid but actually growth of a fetus when one is pregnant fructose catalyzes the oxidation of glucose to carbon dioxide which is basically important for cellular energy so it plays a huge part in regulating metabolism um, what else do I have in my notes at the same time it's important to look at when we break monosaccharides um, down in the gut in a sense they enter into the bloodstream where glucose can actually stimulate a release of insulin from the pancreas well fructose on the other hand doesn't stimulate insulin secretion because it's metabolized in the liver as well as other tissues in the body. So fructose actually stimulates or inhibits the release of insulin by glucose. So glucose can raise insulin and fructose will actually bring it back down. It's like a yin and yang relationship. That's why it's important to eat foods that are full of sucrose so you can actually regulate blood sugar without getting a spike and not having the inhibitory effects of fructose. One last key point I want to go over is that fructose can actually restore glycogen stores in the liver and most people have problems with this they have fatigue anxiety they get cravings they get irritability when they're hungry the liver you know when you when you're hypometabolic and the liver has issues storing glycogen the goal is to reteach it how now when liver glycogen stores are not full or if you have the inability, inability to store glycogen and we ingest one serving of food that's mostly glucose with a little fructose in it like tropical fruits and below ground vegetables let's say a, a small piece of sweet potato with some fruit the liver glycogen stores are replenished and carbohydrate is burned for energy in the Krebs cycle to produce energy the small amount of fructose actually improves the liver's ability to phosphorylate glucose use glucose in the cell which enhances gl liver glycogen replenishment so a small amount of fructose can actually enhance liver glycogen replenishment, reteach the liver how to store glycogen, which in a sense will take precedent over increased triglyceride production. So I know it's a lot to take in. The bottom line is don't be afraid. We need these carbohydrates. You need to look at the types you're taking in, the ratios, the frequencies of who you are, and really understand the why behind what's going on out there. Because if you really look at it, Carbohydrates and glucose are our body's primary source of fuel. And if you eliminate them, you're actually basically sacrificing metabolism in order to lose weight. You're sacrificing short-term stress and survival for long-term health. Hopefully you've enjoyed this clip, and I'm out of here.